Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 3 verses from 7 to verse 12. Let's all read together. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things. Says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jew and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, and that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Hallelujah. Let's all close our eyes and pray, dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day in the morning. Lord, we are here to listen to your words and to know what your heart thinks about us, oh Father, Lord. We want you to speak to us, but every ears and every heart be open in Jesus' name. Let every vision and the eyes of vision, let it be open, oh Father God. Let your words be sown in our hearts as a, as a good seed and let our hearts be a good ground. Let us, let us, let us observe and let us... Take into us your precious word, O God. Fill, this, fill your children, fill this church with your words. Let your thoughts come into action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. May God bless you. Revelation chapter 3 verses 9 says like this. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and not but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. I will read the second portion of the verse 9 here. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. God says, indeed, I will make them. God is going to make something happen. He's going to perform something. A God is a performer. He performs wonders and miracles. He performs mighty things in our lives. He performs great things. If you want something to happen in your life, you have to be sure that only God can make it happen. No man can do something in your life. Your plans, your thoughts, it cannot be processed or it cannot come into existence without the help of God. Only God can make things happen. Come on, everybody say that. God can make things happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, God says... Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. God says that he will make certain persons. Who are those persons? Those are liars. Those who call themselves and, but, as Jews, but they are actually not. Those who call themselves as good people, actually they are not. Those who call themselves as someone who could support you, but they lie, they are not actually the persons who is trying to do good for you, they do have their personal agendas. They are liars. The people hate you. In these last days, Jesus already said, there are days to come where the world will hate you because of God. Do you know, you cannot, you cannot cope up. You cannot go friendly with everyone in this world because this world is going to hate you just for this name, the name of Jesus Christ's sake. They are going to hate you and then that's going to happen. But they will show themselves as the persons who are favorable to you. But God says that he will make something happen. What is that thing? He will make those people who hate you, who curse you, who lie to you to come and bow at, you, at your feet and to know that your God loves you more. You know how, how, how wonderful it will be that persons around you find that God loves you. For a children, take a children, for a child, a child find proud in letting others know that their parents love them the most. You know, when the parents show them 
parents, you parents, when you, when you show them the love, they will find proud in it. They will be so happy. They will say to other friends, my father brought me this. My mother loves me so much and she brought me this and she is so good to me. So this is how the children express themselves to others. They, they will be so proud and they will be so happy to let everyone know that their parents love them. The same way God says he is going to show to this world that he is going to prove that he, his love is with us all. The verse says like this, to know that I have loved you. When people know that God is loving you, they will respect you. They will fear you. They will not, you know, commit things against you. They will not try to push you down. They will not try bad things against you. They will not talk against you. Because they will have this fear. What fear? That God is loving him. And they, when other people, when your relatives, when your children, they find that God is loving you, they will start obeying you. How many of you understand what I'm trying to say here? Hallelujah. Your surroundings, the people around you, they must know how much God loves you. So today I'm going to speak about being identified. Come on, everybody say that with me. Being so how you want you to be identified? God wants to identify you as his favorite person. Being identified as someone who is loved by God. Being identified as some favorite person of God the Almighty. If the enemy, the Bible says, the enemy looks on every people, every person. He comes to rob. He comes to kill and he comes to destroy. This is what the enemy does. Every day and every moment, you have to know this enemy, this Satan will try to bring you down. He will try to bring calamities. He will try to bring problems. He will try to bring confusions in your family. He will try to bring doubts in your family. This is all, all the works of Satan. Everything that steals your happiness Everything that destroys your happiness, everything that kills your relationship, that is being done by this enemy. But you have to know this thing. Today God is promising that, that before the same enemy, before the same person who belittled you, before the same person who, who wanted to take you down, before their eyes, God is going to show them that he loves you more. And that is going to be your identity. Hallelujah. How do you want yourself to be identified? Do you want yourself to be identified as a weak person? Do you want yourself to be identified as a sick person? Or do you want yourself to be identified as a wealthy person? Or, as, or, or, or a wise person? Better than that. You can be identified as the one who is loved by this heavenly God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now what Bible says, the God says that he will make such things happen. You know, when, when God called Moses for a specific ministry, he spent his 80 years, first 40 years in Egypt and next 40 years in the wilderness. After 80 years, God showed himself to Moses in a burning bush. He spoke to him and he called him to do or to serve him or he called Moses to lead the Israel people out of Egypt. But what Moses did or what, what excuse Moses said was, okay God, what if they don't believe me? Now he said, Lord, okay, I will do as you said. But what happens if the Israel people didn't believe me because I already came out as a murderer. I already flee from Egypt fearing as a murderer and after 40 years even I don't know to speak this was the words of Moses he says how would those people believe me you know believe me how will those person will identify me as your uh, as your servant this is was the quest this was the question in Moses heart do you know what God did he showed three different miracles he made Moses to perform three different miracles. One is God asked Moses to put down his rod. So Moses, when he put down his rod, the Bible says it turned, it turned into a snake, a serpent. 
The next moment God said, hold the serpent by its tail. So he hold, he was, he, he holded the, the serpent by its tail. The next moment it turned into a rod and stuff into a stuff. And in another, in, in, in additional to it, God also said, you go, if, you, if somebody didn't believe you yet, take some water and pour it on the land, it will change into blood. This is what God said. And also another, other, 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 another example, God said you put your hands inside, you put your hands inside your dress and the next moment his hand, it changed as white as snow, his hands become leprous and next moment again he did the same thing, it came into back to normal. God showed these three miracles just to make Moses believe one. And he also said, if you do these miracles before the eyes of the Israel people, they will believe you. You have to know one thing. Your children, your family must believe you. Your husband has to believe you. Your wife has to believe you. Your children has to believe every decision that you take. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. If I'm asking my son to do something, he will do it only if he believes me. If I take a decision for my son, he will obey me only if he believes me. The question comes, now the children, this world, this new generation, they think themselves as so clever, so wise. They think their parents are naive. They don't know much about the things that is happening. But you know, still you are a parent. Amen. You must have that value. And how you get that value? How can you make your children believe you? God has to show them that He is loving you more. Amen. Hallelujah. If parents can prove how much God is loving them, they can make their children believe them easily. You know, when Jesus was in this world, He called 12 disciples. The Bible says so. He called the 12 disciples and the 12 disciples followed Him. But only after three, four days, only after a miracle, only after Jesus turning water into wine in the, in, 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 in the wedding, the Bible verse says like this, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Cal Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is what he said in John chapter 2 verse 11. Only after this, when Jesus' disciples started believing Jesus the first time, Jesus had to perform a miracle. So this is what you must understand. When some miracle happens in your life, that is the time God can prove how much He loves you. So when the people around you, when they find that miracle happening in your life, they will know how much your God loves you. So that is what I'm speaking to you today, this morning. How can you and what you must do to make sure God shows His love towards you. How you can prove it to others, when God does something for you, it will be proved. That's what, that's what I said, you know, your identity is much important. What you are and who you are. You know, when Jesus was in this world, the Bible says a voice, this, this disciples, they, or three disciples, name is Peter, John, and, and James, they went together with Jesus to, to the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus talked with Elijah and Moses. They spoke to them. So suddenly these three disciples, they came and asked Jesus, Lord, can we, can we put a tent here for you and for Moses and for Elijah? You can stay here. This is the first, this is the time, you know, I was thinking when Jesus was in complete presence filled situation, in a, a kind of kind of, you know, a kind of transfigured situation, these disciples are suggesting something. You know, you know many things, but sometimes people will come and suggest you something that you cannot do. Yes, have you ever been in that situation where you know something is not right and you don't want to follow it and you make a decision instead. But people coming around to you and they start saying, no, this is correct, this is right, and this is right. You know, in, in ministry, God shows us different parts. God teaches us. Holy Spirit each and every day teaches us different things and way of perfection. So when we try to execute that voice, there will be kind of, you know, suggestions, 
coming from the people, kind of suggestion that would come from people, different people. You can do that, pastor. You, can, you could have done that. You could have done that. But God would have spoken to us something. We wanted to execute it. But other people, they will be coming and giving their solution, suggestion. But what? The same way, the same thing happened during Jesus' lifetime. But what happened at that time when these three disciples suggested something which Jesus didn't like? You know, the Bible says, suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Come on, everybody shout and say, hear him. Yes. This is the word came from heaven. Look at this. If your children, so just, just, listen, just listen and think, what if this happens in your life? Your children or your wife or your, you prayed something and you got her answer. Now your children are saying something to you or somebody who is ministering under you or somebody, somebody who, is, who, is, who, who is a labor next to you or working for you in your business place or wherever you are. You suggest something and they are opposing it and suddenly God says something or if suddenly a voice comes from heaven then say obey him how good it will be. Amen. Amen. How good it will be. Your children are opposing you, not obeying you. And suddenly God speaks to your child, children in the church. Obey your parents. If something happens, wouldn't you find grateful to God? Wouldn't you find it so interesting that God spoke on your behalf? The same blessing is going to happen to us this month. Hallelujah. God is going to speak on your behalf. God is going to do something that he is going to prove that he is loving you. So for that thing to happen, your works, your deeds... What you do is much important. Turn to your next person and say, what you do is much important. Say it. Say, your works are important. Say it. Your deeds are important. What you do, actually, what you do will show or prove who you are. Not what you speak, not what you think. Most of the time we find people like, I thought that, Pastor, I thought of coming to the church early. I thought of doing that. No, that's not important. What you do, your deeds will decide who you are. Your deeds will show who you are. Your works are very important. That's what said about this faithful church in, to which God promised this specific verse. God promised this passage. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. God promised this verse to the faithful church in Revelation chapter 3. So, beginning of those verses, as you could see in chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible verse says like this. See, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you. Have a little, for you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. The first word, I know your works. Come on everybody, say God knows my works. Say it. You know, to another church, in the same chapter, God spoke these words. Jesus Christ spoke these words to a dead church. Do you know what he said? He said, I have not found your works perfect before God. So God is judging you according to your works. God is waiting you. You know, waiting, taking a weighing machine and weighing it. God is weighing your works. Do you remember this King Belshazzar? In, 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 in that specific time, a hand from heaven came and wrote, You have been weighted. I have been found unworthy. So your acts are being weighted. He measures what you do. He measures your actions, your time of prayer. You have been measured. Your actions, the time you come to, the, the, the effort you put to come to the church, you are being measured. You are being measured. The words you speak, you have to understand that God is measuring you. God is seeing your deeds. To the dead church, God said, I have not found your works perfect before God. See, anyone can do any works. But the question is, is it perfect before your God? Anyone can do anything. There is plenty of way to succeed in life. There is plenty of way for you to earn money. There is plenty of way to make you do something or you, there is plenty of way for you to receive a blessing. But is it perfect before God? That is the question this morning. If, God want, if you want God to show you a better identity, if you want God to you know, get, you know, show his love towards you, this question will come. Does your deeds are perfect before God? 
So to the dead, dead church, God said, I have not found your works perfect before God. But to this faithful church, in verse 8, it is said, I know your works. I know your works. If God says that he will know your works, it means he, you have found favor in his eyes. Hallelujah. See, difference. Just understand this. Sometimes God might say, I don't know what you did. Complete opposite, he will say, I know your works. You might be a simple person doing a simple, simple, ordinary, it might be a small work, but God will, you know, even if it is a small work, work, God will recognize it. That is the point. When you do a small thing, God has to recognize it. That is why to the faithful church, God said, I know your works. When God says, I know your works, you have to be sure that it is going to be only a good remark. Hallelujah. Because certain people, they do wrong things before the eyes of God. To those persons, God will say, I don't know your work. I don't know who you are. You know, that situation came in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Now you can just turn your Bible or you can just read it from here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. The Bible verse says, Not everyone, come and read it with me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Come on, say will. Will means the works of God. What God wants in your life, your deeds. So verse 22, it continues like this. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? See, what is the first word says? Come on, everybody, first word. What is that word starts from? Yum. Say it. Say it many. So during that day, not few. Many. This is the danger in the last days. Not few. But many persons, many people are going to come, are going to are going to see this thing is going to happen to many persons. The Bible says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Their work was prophesying. Certain people they prophesied. The second thing, cast out demon in your name. What is that? Certain people they were doing this ministry, they were prophesying, they were casting out demons in Jesus' name, and then done many wonders in your name. These are the deeds. What are the three deeds, deeds said in here? One, they prophesied. The second, they cast out demons. Third, they did many wonders. The, these are all deeds. These are all works. These are all ministries. They did those things. Last days, many people will come, arise and say, Oh, you know, I came to the church, God. You know, I did those things. You know, I prayed. You know, I read Bible. Every Sunday, I came to the church as a formal Christian. I took part in communion. Now, in verse 23, you can continue read it in the Matthew chapter 7, 20. They say, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. How bad it will be. If you are a regular Christian praying, coming to the church and prophesying, casting out demons and doing wonders and everything and finally God says, sorry, I don't know you. What if, what will, what, 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 will, what will be, how your heart will be when God says this? For to every person, to everyone who doesn't do the will of God, who doesn't work according to what God wants, this is going to be the end. God is going to say, I never knew you. Your actions, your deeds. That's why in Revelation chapter 3, as we read, God said, I know what you did. And that is why this promise is being promised that I will show that I love you to everyone. Your works are important. Turn to your next person and say, Your works are important. And again, you have to say, Not regular works, it's God's will. Hallelujah. Not regular work. So you have to be very sure. That whether you do a work or perform a deed according to the will of God, to the faithful church, God said, see, I know your works. And that is why God promises, now I set an open door before you. No, God knows your works, what you do, what you perform. So don't let be in a situation where God doesn't support what you do. You know, also this, the verse in Proverbs says like this, when a man's way pleases the Lord, ways means works, what you do, what you choose, what kind of way you walk in. So when, you, when a man's way pleases the Lord, 
He makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. Listen to this. Your works, the decision you are taking, the deeds you are performing. If God likes it, you know, everything around will be safe. You are, even your enemies will be at peace with him. So when your enemies will start being okay with you, it means there will be an open door. Hallelujah. Just listen to this. Are you facing people who is hindering your blessing? Are you facing people who is trying to stop you from going beyond? Who is trying to stop you from, you know, moving to the next level in your life? Are you facing person, persons who is not supporting what you are planning in your life? Because you might be going through many situations. You might be working, you might be doing some projects, you might be an engineer, you might be a doctor, you might be a teacher, you might be a bank, bank staff. But you need persons to support you. You need support from your family. You need support from your wife. You need support from your husband. You need support from your children. But if it is not so, if ever you feel like every door is closed, you feel like enemy is coming against you, you feel like everyone is start trying to push you down. People say, Pastor, I couldn't find a blessing. Everything I do, it goes into a loss. I cannot, I cannot move further. It's like I am being locked in a place. That is the solution for you. God can open a door for you. God, God can open a door of blessing for you if your deeds are according to the will of God. Hallelujah. So if you try something against the will of God, there will be hindrances. Believe it and you will receive it. Hallelujah. Believe it. Believe this verse. Believe this verse. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. If your ways pleases God, if your works pleases God, if your deeds pleases God, God will make even your enemies be at peace with you. And that is why in Revelation chapter 3 it said, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. Hallelujah. How many of you need an open door in your life? Amen. Open door for your decisions. Open door for your business. Open door for your work. Open door for your job. Open, for, open door for your children, future. If you need an open door, God must know your works. And if God should know your works, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect before God. What you do. And how you know those words, what if, if, that, if those works are right or wrong, the Holy Spirit can teach you. If you want to take a decision, Holy Spirit can teach you. Or if you don't know the way, come to the church and meet your pastor and ask the way. Don't say, oh, my life, my children, my family, my earnings, I can decide on my own. At the end, you will be facing a closed door. It's better to ask the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's better, better to sit and pray. It's better to fast and pray and ask God, what I can do, Lord? What I can do in my life? What I can do to enrich? What I can do to receive this complete health in my life? So see, your works are important. And that too, the Bible says, this, uh, this people, this faithful church, they were truthful before God. They did good work. Even the situation was bad. What was the situation? It says in verse 8, I know your work, see. I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not, and not, have not denied my name. Listen to this. They had little strength. Come on, everybody shower and say little strength. Little strength. These Faithful church, the people of this church, faithful, faithful church, they had little strength. And in that little strength, the Bible says, they have not denied the name of God. And that work, God liked it. Hallelujah. Even if you find yourself don't have any power to strength to perform something, you might be weak or you might not have any positive things in your life. But don't give up God. Don't deny Jesus' name. When fear struck, don't deny Jesus' name. When you are cornered, don't deny Jesus. When it comes to marriage, don't deny Jesus. When, when it comes to work or promotion, don't deny Jesus and go for a backdoor way. When it comes to a blessing, don't deny Jesus and go get behind, you know, giving ransom to someone. 
When it comes to a blessing, don't deny Jesus. Let Jesus be the focus of your life. So this is what he said. Those faithful church persons, they didn't deny the name of Jesus. You know how much last days people are denying Jesus Christ? In their job for a simple promotion, they deny the name of Jesus. For something to happen in their life, they deny Jesus. Some blessing they want to receive, they deny Jesus. They deny the church. They deny the place where they have grown. And they just follow the world. But this faithful church, why God promised that he will show to other people that he loved them. Why he promised? Because these persons, these faithful church, they were really faithful before God and their works were faithful and they didn't deny God even when they had little strength. That is the important. You cannot say, sorry pastor, I have only few persons to support me. And to satisfy that few person, I have to give up a Sunday service. You cannot say that. Even if your strength is low, Pastor, I have this much money only. See, I need to earn more money for my family, for my children. So I have to do something which my God doesn't like. But I have to do because I need money, Pastor. Already I am suffering. You cannot say that. Even if you are suffering, even if you have little strength, even if you have less faith, just listen to this. Don't deny your God. Don't deny what you have been, what you have been taught. Don't leave or leave behind who you are, what God has taught for you. To understand this, let's think about or let's see about Joseph. You know, Joseph was the youngest of his family, 11th son for Jacob. His brother envied him, the Bible says. They, at a the moment, they planned, they plotted to kill him. At a the moment, they, you know, sold him to the the Bible says to Ishmaelites and those Ishmaelites took him, to, took him to Egypt as a slave and this Joseph was sold to an important official in Egypt and there he was working. At the age of 17, he was wrongly accused by the wife of Potiba and he was kept, went into jail at the age of 17. Listen to this. And again, 13 years Till the age of 30, he was in the prison. Do you think he is great? No, he was small. He had no strength. Maybe little strength. He doesn't have favor in anyone's eyes. Because he was a simple man in jail right now. Everything was against him. His own brothers, they came against him. Even his father at a moment, he said, Hey, listen, what you are speaking. He was like that. His, 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 his brothers... They sold him as a slave. And when he was a slave and working in a house, and there also he was falsely accused. He had little strength. Everywhere he was cornered. But the Bible says, each and every moment of his 30 years, he was faithful before the eyes of God. Hallelujah. He did not deny his God in the house of Potibar. He did not deny who he was. He would have simply said, I am a slave. Okay, let us find an opportunity. Let us find an opportunity. Let, let me find an opportunity to earn money. I could have steal. I could do something. No, he didn't do that. He didn't leave his faithfulness towards God. He didn't deny his God. Even in the prison, he didn't deny or he didn't curse. He didn't murmur against his God. He was faithful to God, his God. And what happened at the end? The Bible says, Genesis chapter 42 Verse 6 it says, Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brother came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Hallelujah. The promise from Revelation chapter 3 happened here already. Those people, those brothers who belittled Joseph, who wanted to kill Joseph, who sold Joseph once, they came before him and they bowed before him and they can only face the earth. How many of you need this blessing? Hallelujah. Those people who plot against you. Those people who plot evil things against your family. Let their end be the God-given end like this. Hallelujah. 
so is a correlate what the blessings how the blessings will be if you want god to show others that he loves you if you want to make god others to come and fall at your feet and ask forgiveness or to bow at you or to worship you if somebody cheated you or somebody done something against you and left you you know god can make them come back to you and they will bow at you if your works are truthful before god hallelujah this joseph was faithful and that is why the bible verse says those brothers they came and they bowed down before him with their faces to the earth god can make it happen come on turn to your next person and say god can make it happen hallelujah even the strongest person if they do something against you god can make them come and bow down before you if your acts are faithful before god hallelujah if your actions if your deeds if your works if you if you if you, if you do not deny the name in your the name of god even when you are struggling even when you are struggling even when you are struggling even if your children are not studying well you might say pastor my son my daughter they already have little knowledge so let let me send them to so send them to you know school on even on sundays you know don't deny your god even if they have small strength you know it is god who can strengthen them more not the world not the world this world will push only wrong doctrine into your children you know you have to know how much bad how much worst the world are becoming so don't think even if your children are has less strength even they are not studying well just believe in god he can do wonders in their life hallelujah even if they have little strength you do not deny your god even if you have little health do not deny your god that what came to joseph in this 30 years in this 30 years of life and the 13 years of prison life he didn't deny his god once and that is why you know this revelation 3 9 blessing happened to him come on everybody say revelation 3 9 blessing hallelujah hallelujah when you go home this whole week you have to remember revelation 3 9 because god sees your works if your works are okay and perfect before god god can make people come and bow down before you hallelujah and other words in if you could read from exodus chapter 11 i will end with this thing exodus chapter 11 verse 8 we are going to pray for this what we are hearing right now exodus chapter 11 verse 8 says like this and all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me saying get out and all the people who follow you after that i will go out see this is what the bible says here here moses said to pharaoh he said and all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me saying listen to this this israel people they were slaves in egypt and the egyptian people were not okay to send them out they were not okay the pharaoh he didn't allow the israel people to leave egypt he wanted to keep them as slave so moses came to pharaoh and said if you are not allowing us there will be time god is going to do something and during that day during that time you will come before me your servants will bow down to me and even they will be like begging to me to leave so he was so sure in saying these words who moses he went to pharaoh and he said if you are not allowing there will be a time and all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me saying get out please please leave us so this is what moses said and i you know you know what happened after few mighty wondrous works of god you know what happened really the servants they came to uh, moses and they said they bow down before him and they said please take your israel people out of egypt and that miracle happened you know why what changed the mind of the servants what made the servants to come and what made the servant not only the servant even pharaoh the egyptian people see they hate actually the bible says they hate shepherds they dislike shepherds 
this israel people they were their slaves but still this egyptian personals they came and they bowed down before the israel people you know why god did mighty wondrous things among them hallelujah if god performs signs and wonders in your life even those people who are greater than you who despise you will come to your feet and bow down and they will respect you hallelujah take this word of god for you how strengthened they may be how weak and you may be if god can perform mighty things in your life things may change hallelujah so if you understand what i'm saying here your blessing your revelation 39 blessing depend upon your works it has to be according to the will of god what you do second your revelation 39 blessing depend upon you not denying the name of god not denying who god is even if you have little strength and thirdly your revelation chapter 3 verse 9 blessing it completely depends upon what miraculous things that god is going to do in your life hallelujah how many of you want god to do something in your life amen you want god to do miracles in your life see in exodus chapter 3 god promises like this in verse 20 i will stretch out my hand and i will strike egypt with all my wonders which i will do in its midst and after that he will let you go the bible says i will stretch out my hand and strike egypt with all my wonders how many of you want to pray to god lord strike the evil doers with all your wonders put your right hands up and shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. come and say dear god, dear god. strike the evil doers with all your wonders said amen yes there are wicked persons in this world murderers in this world those people who plot evil things away against good persons in this world let god strike them with the wondrous hands amen hallelujah let signs and wonders start to happen if you are walking in a place if you are working in a school if you are working in a hospital if you are working with someone if god is doing mighty wondrous things in your life those people will understand that god is loving you more hallelujah now can you understand what i'm trying to say here yes hallelujah you need god to do something in your life you need god to perform his mighty wonders in your life that has to happen soon it has to happen it has to happen very near no time to waste god must do his wondrous miracles in our life so that everyone will know that jesus loves us hallelujah we are saying more times that god loves you we also say jesus god loves us but the thing is how others must know other people who are who is working with you even if your children if you say if they say a word against you if they curse you or if they if your children you know say neglect your word you have to pray lord you do something wondrous in my life and let my son or so much my daughter know that you are with me and when it comes your children will be like oh dear mom dear dad i will never speak against you again you know hi hello you want that kind of life amen i'm just referring this with your children but same thing goes with your employer and employee the god has to show to everyone that he is with you through his mighty wonders amen hallelujah finally we will read this verse and we will end with a prayer with isaiah chapter 60 verses from 13 we will read this first i said there there is a need there is a need for signs and wonders now there is a need something different verse chapter isaiah chapter 60 verse 13 the glory of lebanon shall come to you the cypress the pine and the box tree together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and i will make the place of my feet glorious also the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing to you and all those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet and they shall call you the city of the lord zion of the holy one of israel amen hallelujah till last days God promises something in verse 13 he says I will make the place of my feet glorious come on everybody say God will make the place of his feet glorious, glorious. 
what is the place of his feet means where his feet rest where he is god says i will make that place glorious and what happens then the people who afflicted you will shall come bowing to you verse 14 you shall come bowing to you and all those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet and they shall call you the city of the lord come on everybody say that word city of the lord now if you if these things has to happen in your life you have to be in the city of the lord okay you don't have to understand what i'm trying to see here you just think city of the lord because city of the lord that is where the feet of god is going to be and his feet will be glorious city of the lord what is city of the lord the bible is, it is the zion it is the church of god it is the place where god dwells when you are at the city or when, when you are at the place of the god when you are at the zion it is where people will understand how much god loves you how much you are powerful how much god favors you amen hallelujah so this is what the bible verse says here i will make the place of my feet glorious these last days god is going to the, make his church glorious this place will be glorified his presence filled place will be glorified and when you are at that place your enemies those who those who people who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet and they shall call you the city of the lord now connect this verse with what we've been reading about the faithful church while turning to revelation chapter 3 about the faithful church in verse chapter chapter 3 verse 12 everyone read that he who overcomes i will make him a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more i will write on him the name of my god the name of the city of my god and the new jerusalem hallelujah so how god wants you to be in the city of god you can be the see the verse says you can be the pillar in the temple of my god hallelujah hallelujah that is the church this church god has made you to be a pillar in the church are you a pillar in this church hallelujah supporting the ministry through your prayers supporting this ministry through your good thoughts supporting your ministry through your attendance then you are the pillar in the church hallelujah it's not how much you pay to the church not only that supporting the ministry makes you a pillar in the church there are many family in this church who are the pillars of this church i thank god for that hallelujah how many of you want such kind of position being a pillar in the church you know people doesn't have to understand you your pastor don't have to recognize you but god can will recognize you as a pillar of the church amen hallelujah every deeds so connect all these words if god wants to fulfill revelation chapter 3 verse 9 that blessing in your life you have to follow you have to be sure how your works is how much you persevere how much you you know withhold without denying god's name how much you are expecting signs and wonders in your life and how much you are expecting to be a part in the city of god hallelujah to be a pillar in the church of god and if you are like that that blessing will be with you and once again let's all read together revelation chapter 3 verse 9 the second portion we will read together and we will start praying come on everybody say indeed i will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that i have loved you hallelujah now i'm going to ask you a question how many of you here want the world to know that god loves you hallelujah if you need that if you want that as every eyes as you've been sitting right now just listen do you want your god to show other people's anyone except you it might be your husband you might be your wife it might be your children it might be your co-worker it might be your some some relatives it might be anyone in this world do you want god to show them that he loves you more so those kind of person if you're expecting that from god i want you to stand to your feet others you can be seated but if you want god to show that he loves you 
Let him, he, want, he wants, he, he will do something in your life, dear brother. You might be wondering what he is going to do. You might be thinking, will he do that? Will he do that? No, he simply says, I will make those things happen. If you're standing, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to lift your right hands towards heaven and ask God, Lord, I want you to show, show the world that you love me, O oh Father. Lord, we are not expecting might, we are not expecting money, we are not expecting richness, we are not expecting worldly things, but we want you to prove and we want you to show that you love us, O oh God. Those who, have, those who have stood in your, in your places, those who are standing right now, I want, you to pray, I want to pray for you as you lift your hands. As I pray for you, you see, I want you to pray with me. As you lift your hands, I want to pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, I pray for each and everyone who is lifting their hands, O oh Lord. Lord, let their lives be changed. Let their lives bring a, a good name, O oh Father God, so that people might identify, identify them as your loved one. Let people identify their family as your loved persons, O oh God. Lord, we want Revelation chapter 3, verse 9 to happen to each, every one of this church, every believers of this church, every families of this church, O oh God. Not only for the families. Lord, we want this blessing to activate and to perform in our church also. Let everyone who lies and let everyone who is not actual Christian, who, are, who is not truthful before you, Lord, let them come to this church let them bow before you and let them see that you love this church more than anyone let you that lord let them let them find that you love this church more more oh father god let these people who have lifted their hands before your eyes let them find favor in you let miracles happen in their life oh lord in their children's life let miracle happen let their works be something let their deeds be faithful before your eyes let their works be, be perfect before your eyes lord Lord, we want you to know what they are doing oh God every ministry every time of prayer every time of worship every time of Bible reading let their works be known to you father God let it be faithful before you let it be perfect before you Lord we need we need to do works which are perfect perfect before your eyes oh father God then you will keep open doors in our lives then you will open the closed doors then you will open the doors of blessings in our life Lord we want you to open the doors we want to open doors in our life so Lord for that is why we will be careful we will be cautious in doing those things which will be perfect before your eyes we don't want to be perfect before anyone else we don't want to satisfy anyone in this world God we don't want to satisfy anyone by and by doing their works doing their will but we want to do your will God we want to do your will we want to do your will let the children standing here let them do your will oh father let the team students let, let the teams who are standing here let them do your will let the young people who are standing here let them do your will let every adults and every husband and every wife who are standing here let them do your will oh father god let your will be done in your world in their lives and let there be open door in their lives oh father lord we pray as you have done wondrous things in the in the days of Egyptian and Egyptian people in the days of Moses Lord we pray the same wondrous things might happen in our lives also so that our enemy those people who despised us would come and fall at our feet and say God loves you God we have let them confess Lord let them confess that you love us more we ask this Lord everyone who have gathered here let them find favor in your eyes let Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 come in to accord in their lives oh God give value to them let these people be valued let this family be valued let their Christ be valued let their works be valued let their prayers be valued hallelujah 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 let their sacrifices be valued in Jesus name we don't we are we are not expecting the value of money but let these people's life be valued by the love you show upon them oh God we expect wondrous things we expect signs and wonders in our life so that others might know even our closest persons will know that you are with us oh God we want you to prove them we want you to prove them oh hallelujah 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 come on everyone start praying and ask God
God. Lord, let there be signs and wonders happening in my life. Let there be wonders happening in my children's life. Let there be wonders happening in my business. Let there be wonder happening in my works and projects. So do something, God. Do something, do something, do something, do something. Let the world, lost world, let them understand how much you love these people, oh Father. How much you love the godly people, oh God. Let the world understand that all the people who despised them, that all the people who belittled them, let all the people, hallelujah, who spoke against your people, let them understand your love for these guys, oh God. Let them understand your love for these believers, your children, your family, Lord. Lord, be in Jesus' name, be in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, perform. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, you perform. You perform mighty things in our lives. Lord, we pray, you perform wondrous things in our lives. In Jesus' name, 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 hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They are trying as much as they can. Begin their blending in the their lesser strength they are faithful to you in their lesser strength they did not deny your name help us that kind of holy spirit anointing of father god let us not deny deny your name let us not deny your name let us not deny your name come on everybody not even in our little strength let us not deny your name let us like in our little wealth let us not deny your name in our little wisdom let us not deny your name come on every Everybody pray. Let us not deny your name. Let us not deny your name. Like Joseph was, let us follow what you have taught us from our childhood, O oh God. Even if we are in prison, we will not deny your name. Even if there is something lacking in our life, we will not deny your name. Because we know at a certain point, you will bless us and you will show your love for us. Hallelujah. 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 Come on now everybody clap your hands and ask God, Lord, you show, you make it happen. You make it happen, God. You make it happen. You make it happen. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. You love us, Lord. You love us every day and every minute. Thank you, God. Let the world know. Dear brother, the world is soon going to know how much he loves your family. The world is soon going to know how much God loves your children. How much God God loves your family. The world is soon going to know how much the God, He cares for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Come on, everyone, everyone, everyone. Ask God. You prove it, Lord. You make things happen. You make things happen. You make things happen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.